Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this is a levitating water fountain. It is a fountain with falling drops of water that are illuminated by a strobe light. And as you can see in these inset videos, this can create an illusion that the drops are falling very slowly, hovering in midair, or even falling up due to something called the stroboscopic effect. We have a couple previous videos that you can find linked in the description of this one where we show you how this illusion works and how you can build your own fountain. In those videos, we have you use a strobe light app on your phone because it's easy and convenient. However, the single LED from your camera flash is really not that bright. It works if you just want to demonstrate the effect, but if you really want to show off or make your own video of the effect, you need a lot more LEDs. Now, you can buy small strobe lights like this one for about $20, and they come with plenty of LEDs, but they don't flash fast enough. I tested this one, and it only went up to 16 hertz. In order for the illusion to work, we need to flash at least twice that fast. You can buy an industrial tool called a stroboscope that can flash much faster, but those are very expensive. So in this video, I'll show you how to make your own strobe light using an LED strip and an Arduino, because you can do it much cheaper yourself. So in this video, we are going to focus on connecting and controlling the LED strip with the Arduino. Again, we have another video that shows you how to build the fountain and power the pump. Now there are several different types of these LED strips, so you have to be careful and make sure you know what you are buying. This is an example of a common anode analog RGB LED strip. That's a bit of a mouthful, so let's break down what that means. Each LED on this strip actually has three LEDs with different colors, red, green, and blue. You can control these LEDs independently to mix the colors and make other colors. The red, green, and blue LEDs all have a common anode or positive connection. That's the plus 12 volt label you see on the left side of the strip. This is an analog strip where you cannot control the LEDs individually. They all turn on at once. There are separate digital strips with individually addressable LEDs that you can turn on separately. We're not going to show those in this video. Let's switch over to a breadboard diagram and talk about how you wire one of these LED strips to an Arduino. Now, if you don't know how to use a breadboard, you will need to understand that to understand the rest of this video. So we have a tutorial about how to use a breadboard and how they work also linked in the description of this one. If you would prefer to work with the schematic instead of a breadboard diagram, you can also find that linked in the description of the video. So to start, you will need an external 12 volt power supply. The LED strip runs on 12 volts and your Arduino can only provide 5 volts or 3.3 volts, so that is enough voltage. Especially if you are also running your pump on the same power supply, you will need to make sure it can provide enough current. Long lengths of the LED strip can use hundreds of milliamps, and the small pumps can also use hundreds of milliamps each, so you might need a power supply that can provide a few amps just to make sure you have enough power for everything. Now, your Arduino will probably be powered via the USB port or via the barrel jack. That connection is not pictured here. This is a common beginner mistake. You do need to remember that you still need a common ground between your Arduino and the 12 volt power supply, so you can make that connection through the breadboard. However, make sure you do not short circuit the positive 12 volts from your power supply to positive 5 volts from the Arduino, as that can damage your Arduino. Again, you want to make sure you have a common ground, but do not connect positive to positive between different voltages. Also be careful because many times in electronics we use red for positive and black for the negative or ground wire. However, some of the LED strips, like the one I showed earlier, might use red for the red LED and black for the positive 12 volt signal. So make sure you go by the labels and not the color. This black wire is for positive 12 volts, that is not a ground wire. Again, this might vary depending on the LED strip, you will need to check the labels on your strip. You can connect the power supply to a switch on the breadboard that will make it easier to turn the LED strip off without disconnecting a wire or powering down your Arduino. And then the central part of this circuit is a transistor. This one is called an N-channel MOSFET. MOSFETs are designed to drive high power loads like motors or really bright LED strips that can be controlled with a low power signal from a microcontroller like the Arduino. 
you can think of the MOSFET sort of like a control valve or a faucet that is controlling the current flowing through the LED strip using a control signal from one of the Arduino's digital I.O. pins. The MOSFET has three pins, the gate, drain, and source. You will need to check the datasheet for your MOSFET to make sure you know which pin is which. The gate is the control pin, that is the one connected to the output pin from the Arduino, as you can see with the orange wire here. For an end channel MOSFET, when the control voltage at the gate goes high, that will turn the MOSFET on, allowing current to flow from the power supply through the LED strip. When the voltage at the gate goes low, the current will shut off. The drain pin of the MOSFET is connected to the cathode or negative connections from the LEDs. Now I have all three for the red, green, and blue tied together here because I only care about turning the LED strip on full brightness and getting white light. If you wanted to control those independently, you could use three separate MOSFETs and connect one color to each MOSFET. Finally, the source pin of the MOSFET is connected to ground, so when the MOSFET turns on, this creates a complete path for current to flow from the positive 12 volt supply through the switch into the positive 12 volt connection on the LED strip, through these wires, to the drain of the MOSFET, then finally through the source pin and back to ground. So to control the LED strip, we need to turn the digital output pin on the Arduino on and off. Next, let's talk about how we're going to do that. So to control the strobe light, we're going to use something called pulse width modulation, or PWM for short, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to control how long the strobe is on and off. To understand this, we need to understand some things about frequency and period. So let's look at an example signal with a frequency of 10 hertz. That means that the strobe flashes on and off 10 times in one second. So this graph represents the strobe light being on when this line is high and the strobe light being off when the line is low. And if you count them, you will see 10 peaks. So the strobe flashes 10 times per second. And again, we measure frequency in a unit called Hertz, which means the number of cycles or oscillations per second. The period or the amount of time from the beginning of one flash to the beginning of the next flash is one divided by the frequency. So in this case, that is one divided by 10 or one tenth of a second. The duty cycle is the percentage of time that the signal is high or that the strobe is on during each period. This graph shows a 50% duty cycle where the strobe is on for half of the period and then off for half of the period. So it is on for 0.05 seconds. You can change the duty cycle without changing the frequency. For example, this graph also shows a 10 hertz signal with 10 flashes in one second, but it only has a 10% duty cycle, where now the strobe is on for 10% of the period and then off for 90% of the period. So it is on for 0.01 seconds and off for 0.09 seconds. Now, I'm using 10 hertz as an example here because it makes the math easy, but for the stroboscopic effect illusion to work well, you'll need a higher frequency, usually somewhere above 30 hertz. You will also want a fairly low duty cycle, usually somewhere in the 5 to 10% range works well, because that will illuminate the water drops with very brief flashes of light. If the duty cycle gets too long, then the drops are illuminated for a longer time and they will start to look blurry. Circling back to that name, pulse width modulation, you can see that what we're doing here is modulating or changing the width of this pulse or the amount of time that the strobe is on. This shows what we need to do graphically. Now let's talk about how you can do this with Arduino code. Here's an example of a very simple Arduino program that will do what we want. First, we declare two variables, one for the on time and one for the off time, both in milliseconds, because the Arduino delay function, which we'll use later, takes milliseconds as the argument. In our setup function, we declare our control pin as an output using the pin mode command. And then in our loop function, we use the digital write command to turn the pin on. We delay for on time milliseconds. We use digital write again to turn the pin off. And then we delay again for off time milliseconds. This process repeats forever, turning the strobe on and off for the specified intervals. The math works out nicely in this case because the period, which is the on time plus the off time, is 1 plus 19, which is 20 milliseconds, 
and the frequency, which is 1 divided by the period, make sure you remember to convert from milliseconds to seconds here, so 1 divided by 0 0.02 seconds is 50 hertz. Now, if you want to get technical, it does take some small amount of time for the code to go from the bottom of this loop back around to the top, which is going to add a little more time, so you would not get exactly a 50 hertz signal. However, that amount of time is measured in nanoseconds, so we're not too worried about the amount of error we're going to get from that additional time in the code. So here's where things get a little tricky. This all worked out nicely for a frequency of 50 hertz and a period of 20 milliseconds, but what if we wanted to increase the frequency to 51 hertz? Well, if we calculate the period, which is 1 divided by the frequency, that gives us 0 0.019607843144 seconds, or approximately 19.6 milliseconds. Now, this gets a little more technical than what we're going to cover in this video, but while that might not seem like a problem at first, the Arduino language has different data types, some of which must be integers, meaning they cannot have decimals, and if you try to attach a decimal, it will simply chop that value off. And the delay command will not accept numbers with decimals as an input. So this kind of limits the resolution of how finally you can adjust the frequency since you can't use decimal values for the on time and off time with this code. If you do the math to see what happens if you increase the off time by just one millisecond, so from 19 to 20 milliseconds, giving you a total period of 21 milliseconds, then you will see that the frequency is 47.619 hertz. So changing the period by just one millisecond changed the frequency by over two hertz. Well, ideally, especially when adjusting the stroboscopic effect illusion, you would like much finer control of the frequency so you can adjust things one hertz at a time or even less. One way to get around that is to use the Arduino delay microseconds command, which causes a delay in microseconds instead of milliseconds, so this gives you much finer control over the amount of time in the delay. However, you have to be careful because as you can see on the official documentation page, the largest value that this command will accept is 16,386 microseconds, or about 16.383 milliseconds. This would be a problem here because 20 milliseconds is 20,000 microseconds, which is more than that value of roughly 16,000 microseconds that the delay microseconds command would accept. So you can't simply multiply these numbers by 1,000 and replace delay with delay microseconds in this code, or you won't get the correct delays. There are ways you can get around that, for example, by chaining multiple delays together sequentially, as long as each delay stays below that roughly 16,000 microsecond limit, but we're not going to go over all of those in this video. Instead, if you follow the link to the project on the Science Buddies website in the description of this video, you can find working, downloadable example code. Once you've wired your LEDs and uploaded the code to your Arduino, you can get much better illumination for your levitating water fountain. For written instructions for this and thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.